Jotaro Kujo is a character we've seen a lot of when it comes to Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. And I mean, it makes sense. He's the most iconic Joestar there is. If you think about Jojo as generally as possible, Jotaro will most likely pass through your thoughts at least once. Now, as popular as he is, I want to go through the many stages of Jotaro to see what his character amounted to in the end. Let's get some perspective on our Star Crusader. But before that, a small number of people who watch my videos are subscribed, so if you do frequently watch my content, consider subscribing. It helps a lot and keeps you updated. Now in Stardust Crusaders, we get the youth and foundation of Jotaro. As this is his part, we get a relatively close perspective of who Jotaro is. Jotaro is cool, justice, anger, one of the boys, rebellious, and... Well, he can be a mean-ass guy. Jotaro can line up to his delinquent characterization pretty well. It's a reflection of his age, so it shouldn't be too surprising. But when thinking about how he can act, it's good to consider his moral compass. He says it himself. He's not a nice guy, but he isn't evil. And that's by definition and his description of what evil can be. To him, evil means to use the weak for your own gain and then stomp on them when it's over. That's one of his viewpoints. And honestly, when you think about evil in this franchise especially, it's just not Jotaro. Now, some people think Jotaro is incapable of showing love or showing his feelings, and I'd like to attribute that to the anime adaptation. I do believe that Araki makes it a point not to overly show emotions that's not really in Jotaro's character. When he does show emotion, it's mostly subtle because he isn't exactly vocal when it comes to things affecting him. You can look to how he reacted to Joseph's death for that. But when it comes down to it, he's a relatively normal guy. He does love his mom, granddad, and friends. It's just that you see this hard-ass dude majority of the time, so I understand why he's perceived the way that he is. You can also attribute his stoicism to the fact that he takes his design after Clint Eastwood. It makes sense, but if you're not for it, then it's not really going to make the situation any better. And as a final addition to the character, we can look to his intelligence. Jotaro is an extraordinarily perceptive and all-around intelligent person. A representation of that is found mainly in his fights, and bits and pieces of it are scattered throughout part 3. But yeah, I think that this would be a fair general view on part 3 Jotaro. Now let's look to Diamond is Unbreakable Jotaro. Here's what I love that's immediately noticeable about his character. He's grown. Like, Jotaro has taken the means of maturing himself a strong bit. It could be because of age or the fact that Stardust Crusaders events would most likely change the way that a person sees life, but it helped. Well, d helped is a difficult word here because I'm pretty sure that he's traumatized from it all. He doesn't curse as much as he used to. Anger is not as bad of a problem as it was before. Does it leak out? Well, yeah. Yeah, it can. It doesn't often, but it can. When it comes to the events of Diamond is Unbreakable, he's held up a lot of anger until the end and destroyed Kira with said anger. But I'm getting a little too far in aspect of him that doesn't really take up much about his character. He's matured a lot. For example, we can just look to his role in the part. His role in D.I.U. is like Joseph's role in Star Wars Crusaders. A veteran, wise, role model type of character. Except that I'd say that Jotaro is a lot better suited for the position than Joseph could have been. Joseph acted like one of the boys most of the time because of the varying ages in the Star Wars Crusaders that centered around mostly older guys. And along for the fact that Joseph is just a lot more youthful in personality rather than trying to be this matured guy all the time. When it comes to the Moria Warriors in Jotaro's case, the majority of them are high schoolers. Rohan is the closest to Jotaro in terms of age, and those two do not interact like that, like, at all. Jotaro has a set distance between him and the group. They're close, for sure, but that mentor role maintains this distance between them. An example I have is like the relationship that Josuke, Okiyasu, and Koichi have with each other. It isn't going to be like the one that they have with Jotaro. It's still a great relationship. You get to see how proud Jotaro is to have known this group of stand users and how proud he is to see them grow for the better. 
And a good addition to his character is how much more he shows care, but it is something that does require tweaking. For example, he's able to consolidate both Josuke and Tomoko. My thing is that he's not always out there to be the care that people need. That's mostly Koichi's job, I guess. But when it comes to Jotaro, I mean, sometimes he's there and that's cool. He'll do it. Sometimes. But yeah. Now, with that in mind, if Araki had part 6 plans for a long time, like while even writing part 4, I'd say that this is amazing. The reason why is because it's sort of a sign that he most likely has these faults as a father. While he understands things like consolidating someone when a death had just happened, or when they're physically showing that they're upset, Jotaro is able to get it with how out there it is. I don't think he looks as closely when it comes to situations where they aren't as blatant as the other examples. For example, Okuyasu in the Red Hot Chili Pepper fight. You can tell that he's acting in a fit of anger, and then when it's over he's dealing with feelings of defeat and inferiority, and it's Koichi that's there for Okuyasu. Not only because he's the most caring member of the group, but that feeling of inferiority is most likely a feeling that Koichi is familiar with. Jotaro isn't capable of certain areas of understanding and empathy as it's outside of his field of knowledge. That's something that he would have to look into learning and seeing that he's extremely busy with other things like marine biology, I doubt that he made the point to learn about the things of that matter in the future. That is a troubling concern, especially for the fact that he does have a daughter that he'll need to be there for when it comes to situations unfamiliar to him. But. I'm making a lot of points that jump to Stone Ocean, so it might be time to move on as we just covered who Jotaro was in part 4. Now let's look to Stone Ocean Jotaro. What do we know? He tries and he misses sometimes. As we go through the events of part 6, one thing is the same. Jotaro cares about Jolene, without a doubt. That fact is in Stone Ocean. No? no? Like nothing. Nothing at all. That's fair. So throughout the events of part 6, Jolene grows to internalize the idea that Jotaro's absence isn't done with malice, as it wasn't. The idea is that he did it because he didn't want his wife or Jolene to get mixed up in his stuff. It's hard to make these decisions because it's either the world or your daughter. And for those that know where I'm going with this, to hold that thought. Now, one thing that didn't help but was interesting to see because it confirmed my suspicions in Diamond is Unbreakable was when we see how unaware Jotaro is when first seeing him again. You see this full force when Jolene falls with the amulet. He doesn't explain himself or anything. He has no clue what she's talking about here. But when considering current events, it most likely isn't the best time to go about this to Jotaro. Now, I want to pause the idea here because of the scene that happens after. What does Jotaro do in the events of Stone Ocean? I'm not going to say that Jotaro has made up for what he's done. I don't even think that was his intention. But what he has done is try to be the best possible Jotaro that he could be to everyone. Did he do it? Not my place to say, but let's look at what happened. He tries, and well, does, save Jolene, but in the process, he loses his stand and almost his life. In what he most likely believed to be his final hours, he told Jolene that he has always loved her. Jotaro, when talking to her, isn't trying to give her reaffirmation for the sake of her feeling better. Every word he says to her is spoken with genuine intent. In addition to that, this part goes with Jolene being the support and driving force of justice, similar to the role that Jotaro took up in Stardust Crusaders. It comes full circle. It also helps that Jotaro recognizes her potential and strength, and he believes that if she's the one in action, then everything will be all right. This was once the Jotaro that we knew for being the mentor with all of the answers or the protagonist that got his way out of any problem. Now he's at his most vulnerable state for the most part, both physically and mentally, and that's okay. Now what thoroughly tied this all together was the last of his character, the Poochie and Jolie knife situation. 
if he stops Poochie here, he saves the world, no doubt about that. But in doing so, he would be unable to save Jolene. If he saves Jolene, she's saved. There's nothing more to it, unless he weighed the options and believed that Jolene was capable of saving the world from Poochie. No matter how you put it, Jotaro had put the entire universe in Jolene on a scale. Flashback to earlier in the video. This problem has plagued Jotaro through Jolene's whole life. Nah, that's not the right phrasing for it. A problem that's been around as long as Jolene has. Does that make it any better? I don't know. And when it came to the absolute bottom line, he picked Jolene. Bittersweet. That's the only word I can think of anytime I talk about Stone Ocean like this. Bittersweet. He weighed the options between the world, no, the universe, and his daughter, and he picked his daughter. Beautiful. I have more to add on to this, but I feel like I'll need more time because that's more Stone Ocean related. So I'll save the rest for later. Thank you all for watching because of out of all the places that you could have been in the world, you were here with me. And that means so much to me. Man, when I was when I was writing the script, y'all, I'm not gonna lie, I got sad. Thinking about Jotaro in part six specifically gets me like every time. This is a great part. People sleep, I promise you. And just the idea of Dad Jotaro, just oh man, that, that, it's like it's a like it feels like a redemption arc. Honestly, I'm not gonna say that he redeemed himself entirely because it's just not my place for it. But it's just like the the, the effort, the, the the writing. Oh yes, Jotaro. Oh, just yeah, but yeah. Uh, comment what you would like to see, like if you enjoyed, and subscribe to stay updated. I know that people liked the Jojolian video uh, last time, and this is a video that contains part 6 stuff. So maybe people might want to see some more of that. Maybe people from part 7 are going to be like, hey, yo, hey, Caleb, Caleb, uh, some, some part 7 content, that'd be great. But yeah, it's, it's all about whatever y'all want to comment. I'll see the comments and see whatever y'all want. So yeah, hopefully I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, peace out. And Godspeed.